Don Schaefer, thank you for joining us on the Illinois Channel. And uh, here we are in the third week now of April. We've been shut down for something like five or six weeks. Uh, the president is pushing for a reopening of the economy come the beginning of May, if not sooner. It's going to be probably on a phased-in basis, or will be, because the White House just came out with their plan. Well, we wanted to touch base with you as the executive vice president of the Midwest Truckers Association and find out just how your industry is going and, and thanks to you that we've been able to keep the economy moving to the extent that we have. When we go to the grocery store, when hospitals uh, get their supplies, they're, they're not being uh, airdropped on them. They're coming in from the Trucking Association. How has this period of time that is really historic and never had to have been faced before, how, how are the truckers managing during this period? You know, Terry, probably the best thing to say is uh, I think the industry has really um, uh, come to its high, not high point, but it's uh, doing its best uh, in terms of meeting the needs of a, a nation that is uh, uh, in such a mode. Um, emergency supplies, uh, keeping the grocery stores uh, uh, packed uh, are full, uh, making sure we have toilet paper, uh, those types of things, uh, gasoline at the gas stations. Um, it really has been a unique opportunity, I suppose, for the industry to, to show, you know, how important it is to the economy of this country. And it's been a, uh, uh, it's been a hectic experience uh, just because of the fact that we have been involved in um, a lot of the emergency supply situations. Uh, working with state and federal officials to make sure that uh, uh, medical supplies are delivered where they need to go, uh, where the essential um, need to be. If it's a hospital, clinics, um, depots, uh, other destinations around the state of Illinois. So it has really been a um, quite a hectic last six weeks. You, as, as we uh, say, you're the uh, executive vice president of the Midwest Truckers Association, so you deal with uh, I think it's 14 states, if I'm right. Uh, is, is one state any different than the other from what you can ascertain? Is the economy working better in one state than another? And, uh, or is it right now pretty much the same for everybody? You know, I, every state is in the same boat. I mean, it's a national issue. It's a national condition that we're dealing with. Um, uh, every state is a little bit different because, I mean, they have different circumstances. State of Iowa is different than the state of Illinois, uh, whereas uh, surprisingly, you know, Indiana uh, uh, is is different, uh, Wisconsin. But I mean, they're all dealing with the same type of conditions uh, to need to get these medical supplies where they need to go, but also just to get the basic services going. You know, the the industry deals with, uh, um, uh, I suppose you could call it. Uh, 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 a distribution setup that uh, depends on warehouses, just-in-time delivery, uh, these types of things. So uh, there actually, you know, there there are really no borders. I mean, uh, a warehouse from Indianapolis will be filling uh, supplies for stuff that's going to go to Des Moines, uh, Chicago, Springfield, St. Louis, uh, what have you. So it's no different uh, from one state to the other when you're dealing with those types of things. You know, the, the big question is, is that we have a hodgepodge of rules and regulations we've had to deal with. Uh, every state puts out their own emergency declarations. And uh, so one state says you can carry so much weight. Another one says, well, you can go this place and that. Uh, so every state's a little bit different, but uh, you try to work with them. Is, is that something the president could do to help uh, on the federal level kind of break down these hodgepodge of regulations and say, during this national emergency, we're just going to have an agreed upon set of uh, standards so, we, so you don't have to deal with that? Well, the, the federal government has already done that you know, in a lot of areas um, in terms of dealing with um, how many hours a truck driver can drive, uh, certain waivers in regards to licensing. Uh, these types of things are taken care of on a federal basis. But you know, states are fairly autonomous, so they have their own rules and regulations when it comes to uh, uh, you know, driving on their roads, uh, using you know, their local streets. Uh, they all have their own little uh, you know, set of rules 
and you've got to deal with it. It's a little tough because, I mean, you have roads that are built for certain standards and you don't want to be put in, like here in Illinois, uh, for emergency purposes, they've raised the uh, weight limits to 90,000 pounds. Uh, but you don't want a 90,000 pound truck going down a, a rural bridge that could only handle, you know, maybe uh, uh, 20,000, those types of things. So you've got to keep some of that local control in there uh, just to protect the infrastructure of what we have. Um, but at the same time as we're talking, I mean, I think we see that, uh, um, you know, it, it is uh, uh, every state has the same set of problems that, uh, uh, that Illinois does. And I think we just work through it. On the other hand, uh, I would think there's a couple of things that are working to the truckers' advantage. One is that we have uh, the lowest, almost the lowest uh, fuel prices in uh, our lifetime. And you and I have been around for a while. Uh, the other thing is that we don't have as many people on the road, so it's probably a lot easier for truckers to get to where they want to go without being stuck maybe in the traffic they normally would be. You know, that's been one of the uh, uh, interesting things is that there have been traffic studies done uh, that um, calculate the average speed of a truck on the highways. Um, on a normal day, you drive around through the city of Chicago, uh, average speed, 24 miles an hour. Uh, you know, not much, you know, because you're dealing with uh, uh, traffic congestion and those types of things. Um, now traffic's moving at uh, the, uh, uh, the standard speed limit. I mean, 55 is not uncommon. So you're going to see uh, trucks uh, maintaining normal speed on the expressways. Uh, that's not going to be like that forever. Once, you know, the economy, uh, once everything opens up and we start uh, trying to get the economy moving again, uh, we'll deal with that when it happens. But for right now, uh, yeah, a combination of lower uh, pr uh, fuel prices and the fact is, is that there is very little traffic. Uh, it does mean that uh, things are moving more efficiently, uh, but it's not going to be that way forever. For those uh, in government who are listening, um, whether in Illinois or other states, what could they be doing? You know, every day we have here in Illinois, Governor Pritzker having a press conference saying what he's done to manage the situation. What would you say if you had his ear? What could government be doing now that would help as far as the truckers being able to get the products delivered uh, just to help your industry in general? Well, you know, we've got probably two sides of this industry right now. You've got the side that's super, super busy. Um, they're, you know, they're going, you know, as hard as they can. Uh, and, you know, they've got, uh, for example, a lot of companies have got, um, uh, drivers who are, are learning, uh, have learner's permits, uh, and they want to get them on the road. Um, but the problem is, is that, uh, you know, driver facilities are closed and uh, we cannot get uh, driving tests done for these drivers. It would be great if we could get that done because we could get these uh, uh, drivers going for companies that need them. Uh, these are companies that are hauling uh, uh, emergency supplies. Uh, they want to get these new drivers going. Uh, but they're kind of stuck in, you know, uh, dead center right now because uh, they cannot get their um, their driving test done. You know, if you look at the big picture, you know, how long is this going to go on? I mean, are we going to be, uh, um, you know, if the shutdown continues uh, for another month, we're going to have problems. Uh, we have uh, uh, regulatory issues that have to be dealt with. We have licensing issues. Uh, these types of things that... Uh, uh, you know, the longer we let them go, it just impedes uh, uh, the keeping the supply chains moving. Uh, if if we can't get those things moving, um, then uh, we're going to have some real problems in the next month. You know, I, a lot of people in business are struggling to stay in business be, because this is just put like restaurants. Is it's just killing their business? The truckers, it seems to me. And uh, I'm asking you to correct me if I'm wrong. On one hand, are, are the people that are still able to function, and, and frankly, most of us who probably never think about trucking in, in the main are, are now relying on truckers to keep us alive, to keep us fed, to keep the pharmaceuticals that we need uh, at, at the, our pharmacy stores. But on the other hand, there are, so are your members, uh, your trucking uh, companies, 
are they doing okay? Are they uh, surviving this well and basically untouched? Or are there problems for them? And, and to what extent, too, might there be where maybe because they need new tires on their trucks or they need maintenance on their trucks and some of those industries that supply the trucking industry uh, are perhaps cut down uh, that is that going to create a problem for the trucking industry if this shutdown continues uh, much longer? Well, a couple answers here. Number one, uh, most of the suppliers, most of the repair shops are open, uh, able to take care of uh, any problems there are out there. Uh, but where we do have problems, we do see them starting to happen. Um, you know, we keep a pretty close contact with our members in regards to uh, how business activity is. Uh, again, like we've talked about, uh, those supplying grocery stores, gas stations, uh, medical facilities, uh, the essential items, livestock haulers, they're still hauling livestock, uh, we got to eat. So they're hauling that, there's grain haulers hauling grain. Uh, they're all pretty busy. Um, then on the other hand, you talk to some of those, you know, if factories are shut down, uh, then the factories aren't producing goods to be shipped out. Um, those members will tell you things have slowed down big time. Uh, and as a result, we, we have two extremes in this industry right now. And I think that's why we keep saying, uh, the longer this goes on, um, the, the more critical the problem's going to be. Um, and, you know, truckers are just like any other small business. Uh, they got to keep going to uh, uh, to make the money, uh, to pay the bills, and to be uh, uh, to be successful. And as long as the uh, shutdown continues, uh, we're going to see limited uh, activity on the part of some of them. And we may see, uh, you know, some shutdowns. We may see some failures uh, for some companies going out of business in the next couple of months. Have Have you uh, paid attention to what the uh, president? has said relative to the phased in approach, his plan to phase in the economy. And uh, yeah, I don't know if you had any reaction to that, if you thought that was uh, workable and to the extent that as you have, again, some 14 different states, uh, are you hearing that, you know, one state is uh, going to be opening up maybe sooner than the other? It seems like Illinois, because Chicago has been such a hot spot. Maybe we right. can, Maybe we can do it in uh, regions in Illinois where we don't have uh, the level of infection that they have in Chicago and Cook County. Uh, but let's just talk about the availability of opening up in some of these different states. Uh, again, to what extent uh, might an Indiana open up sooner than an Illinois or, or other states? Well, I think you got to look at it from a regional standpoint and, and, and actually what else industries you're talking about. Um, for example, now they may not think about it in downtown Chicago, but agriculture is such a key part of the Midwest economy. Uh, and, you know, you just can't say, hold it, we can't plant right now because of the shutdown. Um, you know, planting is going on full speed. Uh, they're delivering fertilizer, uh, delivering seed, other supplies. Uh, farmers are out there. Uh, the companies that supply the, the fertilizer, the anhydrous, they're all out there working too. Uh, so that part of the economy is going uh, hell or high water. It's going to happen. Um, in terms of a discussion about a phase-in, uh, you hear more about it. For example, Iowa um, really never shut down. Uh, Missouri, uh, much less of a uh, shutdown per se um, than Illinois. Uh, in those two states, um, you know, things are, are, are moving fairly, you know, uh, not saying normal, uh, but it's moving a lot easier and a lot quicker than we are here in Illinois. You know, and that is something I think they have to look at. I think the, the administration um, uh, needs to look at the fact that uh, uh, certain parts of the economy, uh, you know, that have limited contact with uh, uh, individuals, especially in some sort of uh, uh, outdoor type of situation. Um, uh, these types of uh, industries, you know, uh, have a better chance of starting back up again than say if you're working in a, you know, I hate to say it, a beauty salon. I mean, we all need haircuts, but I mean, uh, from that standpoint, uh, people being on top of each other uh, may be uh, uh, something that may, you know, it may be a little bit longer before we get there. But I think that uh, uh, we as an industry are, are um, you know, working per se to, to uh, uh, 
at least keep moving what is available to move right now and to take advantage of those situations where possibly if other parts of the economy open up, we can make sure that we're supplying them with what they need and be able to transport what they produce. You know, too, uh, I know just little things that maybe the average person like myself wouldn't think about. Uh, for the truckers, just keeping the rest stops open on the highway so that they can go in and use the rest stop. Uh, and then, you know, we, we, we go to get gasoline, the truckers have to stop for gas, and they might go in and it's the, you know, a, a typical truck stop where they're going in and having their breakfast in the morning or something. I don't know if those restaurants are open, so I guess there's all kinds of little uh, services that have been shut down that the, those individuals who are truckers, the, you know, the actual drivers on the road are needing to have services typically now. I don't know. I guess they're just eating a, a power bar or something from their truck cab yeah. or if they're an over-the-road driver. Um, that's, that's, that's pretty much true. I mean, in Illinois, at least, uh, restaurants have been, you know, all the restaurants are closed uh, or they're only supplying carryout. So if you're going to a truck stop, all you're going to do is get a, uh, you're going to get a paper bag and say, take it, eat in your truck. Uh, because you can't sit down in any restaurant, and that's tough. And a lot of these rest areas, a lot of the uh, truck stops also, um, you know, a lot of them shut down their showers and these types of things. Uh, so it's really been an inconvenience uh, for the truck driver. You know, the problem also has been, you know, driving restaurants or drive up, you know. Uh, you can't drive a truck up to a, you know, uh, drive up facility because you'll probably rip the roof off. So. Uh, in a lot of these situations, we're, you know, hoping that the restaurants cooperate and let the truck driver at least walk up uh, to the window so that he can, uh, uh, you know, make an order and then pick it up down the next window. You know, it's funny. It's, it, it's uh, funny in a strange way, just all the little problems that we have to deal with that we never anticipated before. And who would have thought, you know, just like you just said, that you obviously a truck can't be going through a drive-in, but if the uh, lobby is closed, just trying to get food. Uh, at, well, f a couple of months ago, you and I were in Peoria together, and there, there was a show going on. And one of the problems that the trucking industry, I know from our conversation then and before, uh, that you always have is a, a lack of drivers. And we're having a number of baby boomers uh, retiring from every field, including the trucking industry. So you're, on one hand, losing experienced people. and. Uh, Let's talk about that. Uh, there are people who might, you know, be out of a job now because maybe where they were working is not going to be able to hang on. And if somebody wants to have a good paying job where they know they can get hired, it appear apparently the trucking industry is one and that it, while there's a learning curve, there are schools to teach people how to be uh, drivers. I know we interviewed some people at that show that we were in in Peoria. Um, as I recall, it takes something along the lines of about a month, which sure beats going for four years to, uh, to college. So d just give us your thoughts on that as far as if someone wants to explore becoming a trucker, w what should they do? Well, you know, that's a, yeah, it's a good question. I mean, it's a big unknown in there right now because we've got a lot of, uh, uh, we don't know what's going to happen in the industry. I mean, are we going to see, uh, um, uh, are we going to see a lot of uh, uh, trucking companies shut down or are we going to see a slowdown in the economy of the recession uh, that we all fear? Does that mean that uh, uh, the shipment of goods and services are going to uh, um, are going to slow down? We don't know. The one thing we do know, though, is the fact that, uh, you know, the truck driver population is an older population. Um, and, you know, the fact is, is that the average truck driver is 50 plus years old. Um, and, you know, it, it seems just in the last two or three years, uh, there's been this big push um, for, um, uh, for us to start re, uh, um, reconsidering truck driving uh, because of the fact that uh, uh, we do know there are people who are not geared for four-year college degrees uh, uh, who don't want to, you know, uh, sit behind a desk. Uh, and spend the rest of their lives hunched over a, a computer. Uh, they want to be out using their hands, they want to drive on the open road, or they want to be involved in warehousing, logistics, uh, any of other parts of this industry, which continues to grow. So um, 
it is something for someone to consider. If they don't want to be a truck driver, there are so many other parts of this industry. Uh, warehousing um, is, um, is so big because of the fact that uh, the means to, uh, of our supply chain uh, has changed dramatically in the last couple of years. And, and thus, um, understanding how to ship goods, uh, understanding uh, how warehousing works, what comes in, what goes out, uh, these types of things. It's really created a, 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 a massive new segment of, um, of the employment field. Uh, you still got to be, you know, you, you got to use your smarts. Uh, but it's not something that requires a four-year college degree. And we tell people, we go, hey, you know, this is, a, um, these are very well-paying jobs. Uh, and that, that's what I was going to ask. We, we spoke a little bit about the salary uh, before, but obviously people, what kind of salaries would, would one be able to have just on a range? And, and also we should mention that everyone, I think, sometimes jumps to the idea that uh, every trucking job is driving from here to California. That's a lot of truck, a lot of driving is uh, local, uh, going from Springfield to Decatur or Springfield to uh, maybe Chicago or, or maybe much less than that. So let's just talk about uh, what what does the job entail in general and then what kind of salary ranges are we looking at? You know, the idea of a long haul trucker has really changed because of the fact that the industry has really gone intermodal. So in other words, um, if you're going to, um, uh, you want a product, say I want a laptop computer, uh, you order your laptop computer. The laptop is built um, in China or Vietnam or someplace else. Uh, and then it is uh, shipped. Um, it could be shipped uh, uh, by a jet, uh, or it could be shipped, uh, put on an intermodal container, uh, put on a boat, uh, and they come over to the United States, like in Long Beach, California. It then goes from a boat, then it gets on a train, and it gets on a train, and it would go to maybe a place like uh, uh, up around Joliet, Elwood, Illinois, which is uh, um, uh, the largest, um, what we call, international port uh, in North America because of the fact that then all these things come in there, they're broken down, then they're put on a truck and then they're sent to stores or warehouses uh, all across the Midwest, 600, 700 miles. So the idea there is things have changed. We don't do these massive uh, uh, or long haul drives uh, as much as used to be done. It's still done, sure, there's specialized stuff, but a lot of it now is maybe a long haul, maybe 600 miles. 700 miles. Um, the idea of a trucker um, um, is, you know, they used to be, yeah, okay, they're gone for weeks at a time. That's not always the case anymore. Uh, there are local drivers. So it depends on what kind of truck driver you are. Um, and, 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 and down from a call. salary standpoint, what kind of money? Obviously, people are going to be working to bring home a, a check. Uh, uh, at a minimum, it, they'd be making what, would you guess? Well, I mean, a local driver. Say you're a brand new guy, just get behind the wheel of a truck. You know, the guy, because he's going to make 20 bucks an hour, sure. You know, um, if you're going to be a long haul trucker, say you're a long haul trucker and you uh, you haul uh, hazardous materials or specialized equipment, you know, those drivers can easily, you know, they can make 100000 a year. That's no problem. Uh, it depends on what you're hauling. It depends on where you're going. Um, you know, every job's a little bit different. But the fact of it is, is that, um, you know, it's like any other job. You, you know, some guys start at the bottom. That's always going to be the case. Right. Uh, and you and you work your way up. But there are truck drivers who will tell you uh, that they will never do any other job because they love the individual freedom. But even more so is that they like that paycheck because the paycheck is good for those. Guys. And obviously, you don't have a boss hanging over your shoulder when you're driving a truck. Which is a good thing. Well, you know, the thing about it is most of those trucks now have onboard computers. <laughs> so they know exactly where you're at. They know how fast you're going. Uh, they know if you're braking too hard. Uh, they That kind of stuff. But um, it is, it's very, you know, it's it's not like getting behind the wheel of an old bumpy old truck anymore. You know, the trucks are very comfortable. You know, they're air conditioned, air ride. A lot of them have sleepers. They've got little mini kitchens in them and they got all the comforts. You know, that you need. If somebody wanted to 
go, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. How do they, yeah. do they call your office or what's the best way for someone Here's who what I, Well, what they can do, they can do some homework. If you're in the state of Illinois, um, you know, Illinois Community College System, it's a truck driver training program. Uh, and, it, you know, depending on where you're at in the state of Illinois, uh, check with your local community college. Uh, there are also, uh, and it's important to say this, certified uh, truck driver training schools, commercial programs uh, that, again, offer the same type of a situation. Uh, they offer the training, basically, you know, a lot of the same curricula, um, but they, they don't do it through the community colleges. They do it through uh, uh, other programs. There's a lot of those here in the state of Illinois. Uh, look for the ones that are certified. Um, and they can be, um, you can find them online. They're all over the place. Um, but again, the situation is, is that, you know, you get out of it what you put into it. Uh, if you are really interested in uh, making a career out of either driving a truck, uh, being in logistics, being in warehousing, uh, there, is a, a, there is a need. Uh, well, and the other thing is, if, if you wanted to move anywhere around the country, I would think you, you're you always going to have a job. It's not just, you know, I mean, it's something that's going to be needed everywhere. Uh, and you're oh, yeah. probably never going to be, uh, there's always going to be a demand, I think, unlike so many other businesses. Uh, you know, if you used to be working into a VHS tape uh, factory now, uh, or DVD, now you're out of a job. Truckers is always going to be in demand. You know, trucking, and, and here's the thing, people think of the, when they think of trucking, they think of, you know, the J.B. Hunts of the world and the Warners and the big guys they see on the highway. But, you know, they only make up maybe 20% of all the trucks on the road. Uh, almost 80% of the trucks that are on the highway in this country are uh, represented by small to medium-sized trucking companies, um, family-owned companies. Uh, you know, they may have three generations of a family working for the company right now. Uh, and the company's been around 100 years. Um, there's a lot of those. Um, you know, we've got uh, uh, 4,000 companies that are members of our association, and probably, you know, half of them uh, are still family-oriented, where, uh, uh, you know, Grandpa started the company, uh, Junior uh, is running it now, and, you know, his son or daughter are involved in the company now too. And uh, it's not uncommon for three generations to be involved in a company. Uh, you know, how long, you know, they, uh, it seems like that these are the kind of companies that so, kind of survive um, because maybe they have a, a lot closer contacts and things like that. So they have been able to survive the ups and downs uh, of the economy over the years. Uh, the private industry is always very flexible and adjusts to the situation. And, uh, you know, I, we were just talking to another small business person who had to come up with a whole new product line because they couldn't sell and deliver what they used to be uh, selling. So uh, I know truckers, thank God for truckers, and the president recently uh, honored the trucking industry for keeping America moving during this period of time. And as I said, I, I thank all of us uh, who have taken so many things for granted, <laughs> like toilet paper, uh, are suddenly realizing how much we owe to those who work behind the scenes, who keep our grocery stores and our pharmacies and our hospitals supplied, and those are the, uh, the truckers. So we really couldn't be doing, uh, having any economy moving without them. Well, you know, it gets back to, you know, back when we were kids, you know, the nights of the highway. Um, you know, the trucking industry was, uh, uh, was looked upon as, a, um, you know, something of importance. Uh, uh, the industry had a lot of pride in what it did and those types of things. You know, over the years, you know, the, the industry's kind of been berated, uh, been beaten down a lot uh, um, and uh, kind of looked down on. But then, you know, sometimes it takes situations like this uh, for folks to realize again, hey, you know what? Uh, if we didn't have trucks on the road, uh, uh, our economy would shut down. And I mean, literally, the economy would shut down. You'd be out of gasoline in five days. You'd be out of milk in three days. Right. Um, grocery stores would be empty. Their shelves would be empty in three days. Um, well, and as you said would... earlier, and I, I didn't think about it just as far as the, the farmers. You think about the farmers on the farm, but they, 
they're not a, an entity unto themselves. They still need to have supplies brought to their their farm so they can have the seed and the fertilizer and all the rest that they need to keep farming. Sure, and in fall at harvest time, I mean, you got to get the grain from the you know the farm and to the elevator, and then from the elevator to uh, the processor or the river terminal, no matter where it goes. And that's all done by truck. You know, we're seeing uh, how important trucks are, especially coming up this summer, uh, because of the fact that, uh, you know, we're going to shut down the Illinois River this summer. Uh, I shouldn't say we. Uh, the Army Corps of Engineers uh, is shutting down the locks and dams on a good portion of the Illinois River this summer uh, because they need to be repaired and uh, uh, a lot of the locks need to be replaced. So this is the summer that they decided they're going to do it. Well, it's going to shut down all that barge traffic on the uh, on the Illinois River. Uh, so, you know, for two years we've been strategizing, you know, having trucks available to move uh, uh, to move grain or to move uh, uh, fertilizer up. And, and how long gone is that going to be shut down? Well, we're talking five months. I mean, we're you know they're going to start uh, uh, they're going to start this early summer, uh, and then uh, uh, it's going to be shut down for at least five months and. Uh, uh, it, it just means that those barges that you always see going up and down the river uh, won't be doing it this summer. So all that stuff has to be moved some other way, and it's going to be trucks. Uh, so it just shows that, uh, you know, if one mode's down, the other one's got to pick up and, right. and carry on. Well, maybe we can do another follow-up conversation on that. Uh, we've already kept you about by half an hour, so I don't want to keep you too long. But as always, we appreciate you joining us. Is there anything else you wanted to say before we close out? No, just thank a trucker. I mean, that's a big thing. I mean, the president did it last week. Um, you know, the fact is, is that, you know, we've heard that a little bit more. You know, it's kind of, uh, for me, I've been in this job 28 years. Uh, it wasn't too often you heard compliments for truckers. Um, but uh, watching TV commercials, you know, they're, they're sitting there saying, well, thank the truck driver for bringing this and bringing that. You heard the president say that, you know. Um, you know, it's kind of nice to hear a politician say that, you know, because usually you don't. Usually they're beating you up, you know. And, and uh, so uh, hopefully there's a little bit of newfound recognition there that uh, uh, the economy does move, uh, you know, with the, with the help of not just trucking, but I call it logistics because uh, they're all key, key components. Um, you've got to have the warehouses. You've got to have um, all the modes of transportation working together uh, this day and age. You can't depend on just one uh, to get things moved. It takes a lot of everyone to do it. Um, but we always consider trucking first mile, last mile. You know, we're, we're the, you know, the industry that takes it uh, maybe from a train or an airplane, you know, to where it goes. Uh, and we're always the industry that uh, is the first one to pick it up at a farm, pick it up at a factory or what have you and then get it to where it's going. So, you know, from that standpoint, um, uh, again, just remember that uh, trucks are there and, and uh, we hope that uh, um, we're able to keep doing our job uh, and not to overregulate us to the point that uh, uh, it makes it difficult, because that's half the battle. Yeah, you know, maybe one of the good things that come from all of this is that uh, each of us will understand that when you live in a modern industrialized society, as we do, and we're blessed to, it's far better than it was back in the Middle Ages, uh, but that there is a whole infrastructure that we need behind the scenes, keeping that economy going in any number of fields, and certainly trucking is one of the very key components of that, uh, and that maybe we'll all not take all of this for granted as much as we have in the past, and when you and I normally would be dealing with uh, the spring legislative session, uh, which has not also been happening now, <laughs> but, uh, you know, when we, when we consider these bills and these regulations and all, maybe uh, everyone, including the lawmakers, will have a little more insight that as they pull the levers or add or subtract uh, taxes or cost or regulations, uh, they'll have a greater understanding of just how one thing impacts another. Uh, in in that process, you hope so because I mean that is, you know, exactly you know uh, so true because of the fact that uh, um, you know it seems like you know hey this industry is easy picking you know we can raise a license fees or we can raise our registration fees uh, we can uh, say we're going to pay you know 
uh, a higher tax for this and that, and uh, uh, put it on the industry, uh, saying, well, they can afford it, they can do it. Well, the industry cannot always afford to do it. Um, you know, and it's been uh, 16, look, 16 years ago that we, uh, uh, we raised some taxes uh, under a former governor who I won't name. And he raised uh, truck license fees. He raised all, he put new taxes on our industry. And, you know, instead of paying the taxes, a good hunk of that industry moved out of Illinois and never returned. Uh, and um, as a result, uh, you know, we've always been fighting and clawing back because we have to compete uh, with our neighboring states. And the taxes, for example, in Indiana and in Missouri are much cheaper than what they are here in Illinois uh, for truckers. Uh, and so you continuously see that. Um, and we kind of use it as a word of warning, you know, um, you know, don't tax an industry out of the state of Illinois uh, because it's been done once before and we don't want to see it happen again. Right. Well, Don Schaefer, as always, we thank you for joining us. We'll look forward to getting together, hopefully in person before too long. And uh, we always are appreciative now to see truckers on the road. And if you are out there driving, of course, give the, give the truckers a little bit of extra room. <laughs> the, don't be cutting them off. Uh, thank you again for joining us, Don. Thanks, Terry. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. And while you're at it, please leave us a comment. Thank you for watching.